Happy First Impression Friday, everyone. Today we are going to take a look at Fresh Press Patterns. Uh, pretty new pattern company, three or four years old. Um, and I think she's got like nine or so patterns. I did read her about section, which has a really cute story about, you know, how she got into uh, designing sewing patterns. She actually has a lot of industry experience, which doesn't necessarily make a great pattern designer. Like you can certainly be one without having that experience. But I do think that her particular experience in quality assurance, as she explains here, um, did give her a good eye for design, fit, and all of those things that we typically look at in a First Impression Friday video. So I'm eager to see how her patterns um, stack up, how they look, how the designs are, and everything else. From the um, homepage, I think I saw somewhere where she described it. Oh, shoot. I don't see it now. Um, she was it, she had like a basic uh, sort of sentence about her patterns being basic but fashionable, I think. That was... That was a sentiment. Oh God, I'm doing a terrible job at that. It's not in the about us section. I don't remember where I saw it, but either way, elevated basics. Maybe that's what I saw. Who knows? Um, but okay, let's take a look at the patterns. If you come here to the shop patterns drop down, this is how her website works, which I think is really cool. Um, you have your pants, then you have your tops and you can scroll over and look at both of the tops. And then the dresses are the same way. Now, obviously, she wouldn't be able to do this as her brand grew. I think if you have, like, you know, more than 10 patterns or so, this would be hard to look at. But um, I did think that, that was really cute way to do it. Something different you don't see very often. But we are going to just take a look uh, at the patterns this way. What's interesting to me, though, is not all the patterns are in this little grid here. And you can't, there's not like one page that you can go to that has all the patterns. If you click shop patterns, nothing happens. So she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this thing only has six. So I don't know where you would go. If you wanted to see, for example, this Leon coat is not in here. So you'd have to know to go to that menu. That, so that's a little bit, the user interface here is not that great. So, but either way, we're going to go through this list then. That's how I'm going to do it. So James Knit Pant is first. Um, you can see here there's 16 bucks. There is a PDF pattern or she will print the AO um copy shop size for you and ship that to you. I don't think that means you get the instruction booklet printed. That still comes PDF, but she will print these out for you on, you know, printer like thickness paper. Okay, this is your go-to pant. With a sleek, clean, modern fit, this pair of straight leg pants will go a long way in your wardrobe. The James Knit pant is tailored with plenty of stretch, this medium rise pant with a wide contour waistband that falls just below your natural waist hugs all the right curves and hides all that needs to be hidden. A center front invisible zipper closure, interesting, eliminates the excessive waistband bulk. The neatly pressed creases through the front will give the illusion of a slimmer leg. With a James knit pant, you'll have the look of a pant and the comfort of a legging. Sewing instructions come with additional instructions to alter pattern into a modern boot cut. The model's 5-8. Fabric suggestions are ponty knits only. And her favorite is the Telio Cotton Nylon Blend Ponty. A little typo there. Um, no stretch wovens will work. So one and a quarter to just a little over one and a half yards, a six inch zipper and interfacing. And then here are your what you get with the digital pattern. Okay, let's take a look at the photos. Does this open up? Oh. Ugh. <laughs> you know that's such a pet peeve of mine. Because I can't even like 
Okay, we're going to look at it this way. So it is a pretty straightforward design. I mean, I don't even see a pocket. Um, and the invisible zipper up the front, that is quite interesting. Why wouldn't we have put that in the back? I don't know about a front invisible zipper. Do you think it has a fly? I wonder if it has something in between the actual zipper and your skin. Hmm. Here is the next photo. You can't really see much more there. This is another straight on. This one looks a lot different than this one though in the leg shape. I wonder if this is the boot cut that she was saying you could get. Oh, and they put a stripe down the side on this one too. Did this one have that? Hard to see. Here's the line drawing. Okay, yeah, really, really straightforward pant here. Um, just a couple of darts in the back. That is really all you have in the way of fitting. That invisible zipper, I'm just really hung up on that. I, a, if it's ponty only, don't you think you could ha could like draft the waistband with enough negative ease to not need a zipper at all? And then B, if it's obviously a pant and has a center back zipper, why wouldn't you put, or a center back seam, why wouldn't you put the zipper in the center back? Easy enough to change, easy enough to swap around. I guess it's just a design detail and she said, I want it in the front. So in the front it went. <laughs> um, but obviously as the actual maker of the clothing, we can move the zipper to the side or the back or wherever we want it to go. Just interesting that she chose to put it in the front. You don't see that very often. Um, yeah, I mean, there's really not much to it. Very basic. Uh, I was looking at this chart thing. What is the chart? Oh, the size chart. Okay, so she has sizes 2 to 20. And then, are these body measurements or finished garment measurements? Hmm. I, I'm going to guess finished but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, 30 inches up to 42 on the waist, 35 to 47 in the hip. Now, as you can see by the little asterisked, this little area here, um, the finish measurements will be smaller than the actual body measurements, but, you know, not by much. Um, so this pattern barely fits me for reference. So if you're anything larger than like a 14, 16 in the stores, I don't think this pattern would fit. Um, and since it is so basic, I would expect for it to fit well. It does fit the fit model. I, however, do not see a picture of the back, which I like to see a picture of the back anyways, but especially in pants um, when fitting the back is so imperative. You also don't ever see the top of the waistband. So I can't really even tell where the pattern, like how high the rise is. Um, even if they would have just tucked the shirt in, that would have been really helpful. But I would have wanted to see that um, front and back as well. Just a lot of opportunity for more, more photos here. Yep, and that's it. So we don't have any tester pictures, which is fine. Um, just these four. So it leaves a lot to the, like, it just makes me wonder about a lot. Um, okay, that's the James Knit Pant. Now we're going to go through the tops. We've got an iris top. Um, this one is sewing uh, the skill level three. The pants were two. So this top must have some interesting details to make it more difficult than the pants. Um, two, I'm sorry, XS to 2XL on the sizing here. You'll want this top in multiple colors. The iris top is so easy to wear. I call it the lazy but chic t-shirt. That's cute. The loose fitting but not sloppy looking top is longer in the back than in the front. It has a short cuffed sleeve and slightly dropped shoulder 
seems for an easy fit. True. Wear it with your slim jeans, leggings, or our James knit pant. Fabric suggestions are light to medium weight fabric with soft to medium drape like crepe, tensile, linen, double gauze, chambray, heavier silks, shirting fabrics, etc. You may also have fabrics with minimal stretch of no more than 5%. Be cautious of fabrics that are too lightweight or fragile. You might end up with a very ruffled and stretched out hem when applying the bias tape. And then there's this link that takes you to the iris as made by you. Let's just see what's in there. More beautiful iris makes by Faith St. Jules on Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. So three Instagram posts that she calls out. And then this is like a blog post that has a lot of um, blogger makes or, or community makes. So that's pretty cool. Lots more photos to look at there. Um, okay, and then you need self fabric, bias tape, and matching thread. So you don't really need any notions at all. Okay. So as she explained, the top is kind of like um, a crew neck, um, slightly dropped shoulder. But honestly, if she hadn't have said that, I wouldn't have noticed. Um, that's how slight the drop shoulder is. Um, it's still on top of the shoulder. I think a lot of the drop shoulders we've been seeing lately have come down like this. But this is a, a, a very slight drop shoulder. Um, and it looks like maybe some kind of like, is this the side seam? I don't know. We'll look at the line drawings. Oh, here we go. Oh, is this one not going to zoom? You got to be kidding me. Of all the ones that I want to zoom in on... <laughs> This one. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. My computer was just slow. So it has this interesting detail here that sort of starts out as a like side panel. You only finish, you only sew together the top part and then the rest of it is separate, kind of like a tulip, kind of like a flower, like the iris. That makes sense. Okay. And then you've got these baby hems, which she has the bias tape right? That's where all the bias tape is. Does she say what size bias tape? No. So that's interesting. Here's the back, just like she said, longer in the back. Um, there is a seam here as well. So the, the front bodice wraps to the back. And then here it is in a print. Quite cute. I really like it. This one has the exposed bias tape, so that is on the outside and it's visible. And again, I mean, the, the shoulder seam is sitting just to the outside of her shoulder, barely, barely. Lots more pictures on this one too, so that's nice to see. Now this one is a little long in the back. I mean, I don't know. It's, she only has one model. Um, and I don't think she said there were two lengths. Uh, this could easily be shortened by six inches to me. For, like, if I were making it. I don't know that I would make it that long. You can see from the side view here how, just how long it is. I mean, in my mind, the long part would come this long. And then the front part would be even shorter than that. So I think the whole thing could probably be shortened a little bit if you didn't want it that long. I mean, am I crazy? This one's shorter, right? Maybe not. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Okay, but she only has one view on the on the illustration. So there it is, a little cuff too. So cute details. Again, it is basic, but, you know, we've been doing these first impression Fridays for a while, and there's certainly some patterns out there that are even more basic than this. So if if what I saw was right where she explained it as, like, basic but elevated or basic but fashionable, I agree with that so far. Okay, here's our chart. So she talks about the recommended fabrics again. And then the 
body measurements are 32 to 42 and a half. And then hip is 34 to 44 and a half. Is that what that says? Oh my word. Okay. Finished garment measurements are, oh, she only provides for the bust. And it is a, a B cup, drafted for a B cup as well. That was the first time I saw that in this um, chart. So, yeah, pretty exclusive in the size range. I don't know, even know if I would be comfortable making this. I mean, I guess it is a little bit forgiving in the hip because it does have the split hem. But I mean, with only the bust measurement to go off of, I'd worry that it would be, I don't know. I don't know. It says right here on the bottom where the asterisks are, this pattern side seams overlap each other. There's no traditional side seam. The side stitching stops just below the bust and allows the remainder of the sides to fall loosely. Therefore, the waist and hip measurements are not possible to measure. Which I understand that, but being someone that always has to grade out at the hip, and if I were to make a medium, I would just worry that they would pull apart too much. And then if you start to pull apart too much, then it causes tension here and quite honestly, pulls. And furthermore, <laughs> it's not, I mean, there is a possibility that this could be too small. This could just come in like too small and look kind of weird on your butt. So I don't know how she would get around it. Um, how she could, you know, go about, I don't know, coming up with a way to make that make sense. I guess in my experience, knowing that I have to grade up for my hip, I would just do that. I would just do my normal uh, medium bust, large waist, extra large hip and hope for the best. But if you're newer to sewing... Well, I guess if you're new to sewing, you're probably not going to sew at three scissor skill level either. So maybe it's okay. All right. Next up, we have the willow top. Okay. Willow has a ruffly flouncy sleeve. You guys know I love that. The willow top is loose fitting with a dropped shoulder and ruffle sleeve. It has a tie back closure with an extra wide center back seam for interesting detailing. The willow top with a slight A-line fit and asymmetrical hem longer in the back than the front is flirty with any pair of pants and looks very smart with the pencil skirt. All right, pattern is designed for wovens. Choose lightweight fabrics with soft drapes suitable for blouses like silks, crepes, cottons, and rayon. If you want more architectural and structured look, choose a shirting fabric. Keep in mind, shirting will create a stiffer look and it's not always suitable for every body type. And then we have three Instagram posts. Yep. Revamped Willow. I wonder what that means. Let's open that up. And then you have your one meter to one and a half meters of self fabric, bias tape, matching thread. All right, cool. And then you have your PDF format. Um, so far, all the patterns have been $16. This one is two scissors skill level and extra small to extra large on the um, sizing. All right. So very high neck. This one does have more of a quote unquote traditional drop shoulder, more of what we come to expect when we see or hear drop shoulder nowadays. Um, this is interesting. Is this an, a right angle? We'll look at the line drawings on that. But then it's a, oh, she said it's a ruffle sleeve. So it makes me think these are gathers. And then like she said, higher in the front and lower in the back. Here it is from the side. Super cute, right? It is quite simple, but cute. Here's the um, the back with the extra wide center back seam that I think, yeah, it ties into a little bow up here. 
So I don't know if that's the bias, the neck binding just being extended to make it longer and that's what you use to tie it off on. And then also, is this sewn inside out? So that's visible. Here is one out of more of like a shirting material. I think it's a, well, I thought it was a seersucker. I actually think it's a rayon now with maybe lit embroidered um, bugs on it. I still can't tell what's up with the sleeve. Let's look at this. Ooh, that stripe. And then this one, it looks like the extra wide center back seam is not exposed. So I guess you have an option. Here is the line drawing. Okay, nothing really going on with the sleeve where it connects. I thought there might be like a right angle or something funny there, but there's not. Um, and then what is this? Just the line drawings on like a croaky. Okay. And then here is our size chart. So same size, no. Uh, this size chart is different. The top one should be, should be, well, I don't, it's hard to say. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is the top chart is her body measurement chart. That should be the same pattern to pattern but it's not. The last pattern was slightly different. This one goes up to, this one's 32 to 40 in the bust and 35 to 43 in the hip. It only goes up to a numerical size 14. And then the finished garment measurements are in alphanumeric sizing, which is 36 and a half to 44 and a half inches. And then the hip is 41 to 49. So she's looking for six inches of wearing ease in the hip. So yeah, this would, I would not be able to make, well, I could make it. I just have to, you know, um, alter it. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what this revamped willow. Oh. Started with a ruffle sleeve and now has the pretty sleek little update. Additional design lines completely transformed the top. All the step-by-step -de details are in her blog. So she has um, details on how to, to chop up the pattern to get this little sweetheart situation. Okay. All right. Well, that's Willow. That's it for tops. Dresses, we have the EB dress. How cool is this? Very cute. Okay, um, meet the EB dress. Trimmed with center front buttons, tailored for a slim fit and belted for added definition. The front hem, upside down V cutout, allows for easy movement and an eye-catching detail. Make it in denim for a casual everyday dress or a wool or wool crepe blend to add a little more sophistication. The EV will also work well in a thicker cotton twill or linen. The dress is unlined. You'll reach for this dress year round. So here are a couple more Instagram posts. Um, this dress has both bust and bodice starts, so go with a fabric that will mold to your curves. Choose wovens or heavy knits like Ponty with no more than 2% stretch. A spongy denim, What's spongy denim? With stretch or even scuba knits. Hmm. If you go with a stretchier knit, you may need to size down. Wool and wool crepes will mold beautifully. Cottons and linens work nicely too. So two to two and three quarter yards of fabric, buttons, and she even gives you the industry size of the buttons, not like half inch button or whatever. Um, it's kind of, Sometimes it's easier to shop this way. Um, interfacing and then matching thread. We've only got a couple pictures here, but I love how the button detail goes all the way up the neckline, even though obviously you're not buttoning it that high. Here are the bust darts. This one seems a little high. This one's pretty good. 
And then here's the back. Yep, pretty straightforward back. Let's look at these ladies' um, Instagram posts just for two more extra pictures. Cute. So she omitted the buttons on the neckline, but she also used these like really, really stand out statement buttons too. And her darts, this, you know what, this one still seems quote unquote high because I think we're used to the darts pointing to the apex, but I say all that to, uh, but I do want to, also say that even though this is technically higher than her apex it's not causing any other funky issues and in my opinion a dart is really just there to create space for the breast and it could go in a bunch of different places but so long as it still creates that like space for your breast to go in and not any other folds or wrinkles or anything it should be okay. I don't I don't know that I mind them being as high as they are. Look at the fit of hers on the back though. That's incredible. Really, really pretty. And then here's my friend Amber. Y'all remember her? The OG channel followers <laughs> remember her from the very beginning. Um she did the buttons all the way up. Um, of course, Amber's the fit on Amber's clothes are always incredible. Um and she just posted the two pictures and you can't really see the darts on hers. But again, that's to say that it's not creating anything weird. So maybe the higher dart is okay. Just because the way it's drafted or shaped, you know, if it's intentionally supposed to be that high, then it's drafted in a way for that to make sense. If it's drafted to go in line with the apex and then ends up that high, I think you would see other things that would indicate that that was an error. Does that make sense? Um, okay, here's the line drawing again, which I think we pretty much saw everything. Actually, you know what I did miss? Oh, they didn't put it on. That's why. Okay, so in the line drawing, there's a little back belt carrier um that you can't see she also has all the, the dashed lines represent the facings okay and then here's the chart finished measurement chart so no reference for how much ease is supposed to be in this garment but the bust is 32 and a quarter up to 46 and a half. And then the hip is 36 and a quarter up to 49 and a half. So I am just outside of her size chart, I think. And again, I'm like a 16 in, in pants and ready to wear. Okay, Evie dress. Now we have the... The Vera knit dress. Beautiful brocade here. Um, sizes 2 to 14. Again, she's calling this advanced beginner. It's two scissors. Also 16 bucks. I think all of them have been $16. Um, okay, she describes it as your go-to dress. Sleek and fuss-free. It'll become a staple in your closet. Wear it with a cropped denim jacket and flats for an easy everyday look. Or dress it up with a short Booty? Oh, booty shoe. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Um, for a little va va boom. I think booty short, booty shoe is T uh, T I E B O O T I E. This is the body part booty. <laughs> um. Okay, the dress pattern will work best in a medium weight jersey or knit with a soft drape. Scuba and Ponty knits will work beautifully. I wonder if this is how they spell Ponty wherever she lives, not in the U.S. Thread, ballpoint needle, and bias tape. Here's a post on making your own. 
Okay. Yeah, it's just a little sheet dress, right? I don't see any. Um, ooh. Uh, <laughs> well, this isn't ideal. Um, a little long in the waist for her. Is this a seam? Oh, yeah. This is something. So I'm going to flounce at the bottom there. That's really all I see here. This solid will be easier to see. Yeah, because it's made out of knit, it's just one straight piece. There's no darts, nothing. Here it is in the back. Again, similar-ish um, problem in the back. But this is really pretty. This little design detail is really cute. And that's what, in the front, it creates this fun little shape at the bottom, too. No line drawings on this. Hmm. Okay. And then this appears to be, is that a different size chart? It might be. So this one is made from a knit. So again, the finished measurements should be, should have negative ease in them. So, um... But I think that I'm still like two or three sizes larger than her, than the 14 is. Yeah, because the um, body measurement at the hip is 43 and I'm closer to 48. So I would need to like adjust this to add five inches to the to the uh, hip. And because there's only two seams, you know, the, each side seam, that's just more work that I'm willing to put in, especially for a sheath dress. But that's just me. If you are on the smaller end of the size range, um, I think the dress is really cute. You would just need to check the, the back for sure. Um, and see if it's just a little long waisted there or if that particular model needed some kind of adjustment done uh, because of her particular body shape. Okay, so that's Vera. Next we have London. Nope, no London. Okay. Then we also have Millie. Millie, okay. I think Millie is her most recent release. Um, okay, so one scissor, the easiest pattern we've seen so far. Uh, still 16 bucks, still PDF, printed AO or at home AO, which costs the same as the printed PDF. And then, wow, to get yours printed by her is only $3 more, but you'd have to pay for shipping. And I don't know where that would, where that information is, but either way, hello, Millie, this is a French new design created with the new sewer in mind. It's uncomplicated. It's easy. It's chic. The generous volume in the sleeves adds drama and frames your face. That's interesting. The A-line silhouette is flattering on all body types. The bust darts give you shape. A front neck facing with back neck bias finish gives modern detailed touches. Okay. You want to emphasize the sleeve volume with this pattern, so choose fabrics with body. Scuba knits, linens, cottons, even faux leather. So then for your fabric, you need two to two and three quarter yards on a 1.6 yard width fabric. Okay, fusing for front facing, matching thread, yada, yada. Okay, lots more pictures on this one, even though it looks like they were done pandemic style <laughs> at home, makes total sense. But yeah, they've got the really... Um, voluminous, almost like a bubble hem on the sleeve. They're really pretty. Um, simple V front, simple A-line dress. Here it is in a faux leather. Perfect choice for faux leather because you don't really want to be sewing, you know, a ton of seams into faux leather. I mean, you can, but it's kind of finicky to work with. Here it is in a print. And you can see how... There's bias binding in the back, 
and then somehow that becomes a facing in the front. So that's a really interesting detail that you don't see a lot in home sewing. Here's the line drawing. And then here's the size chart. So, okay, so now this size chart has two additional sizes compared to the last one. Um, it has the 1x column and the 2x column. Um, so now the bust measurements go up to 50 inches, 50 and 3 quarter inches, and the hip goes up to 53 and a half inches body measurements. Finished garment measurements um, go up to 52 and a quarter bust and 57 and 3 quarters hip. So this is much more inclusive. Still not, I think, what is it? I think the industry, I think what um, the, the um, plus size community is deemed inclusive is a hip up to, is it 58? So this is very, very, very close to that. Well, it's 58 body measurement. So she'd need to go up one or two more sizes to be fully inclusive. But certainly, this is a step in the right direction from her earlier patterns. And I don't know, maybe that's something she's looking into doing. I'm not sure. Um, let me see. The London dress is still not working. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Is it down here? No. Okay. But we've also got the Carolina dress is here, but not in this list. There's a chance that I'm not going to find all of her patterns. I didn't mean to click the coat yet. Um, dresses, I just want to make sure. Evie, Vera, London, which doesn't work. Millie, I wonder what this is. Menu item, nothing's happening there. Okay. So then we'll continue with this. And we've got the Leon coat. Cute. So this is four scissors. <laughs> the most difficult pattern she has. It goes up to a size 20, still $16. The unlined Leon coat with its sleek, minimal design is a welcome update to your closet. With a slightly loose shape, it will easily slip on over everything. Leon is detailed with oversized blocks that have flap and single welt pockets. The coat closes with snaps. I love that. The two-piece sleeve, you know, I love a two-piece sleeve, gives a nice tailored fell and fit. You can elect to finish your inside seams with bias tape, aka Hong Kong, or simply overlock. Lengthen to the knee to go with all your dresses or as is for all the denim in your closet. Choose fabric with a medium to heavier weight, medium weight wools, cotton twills, or sweater knits. So two and a half to three and a half yards-ish. Uh, interfacing, snaps, thread, and bias tapes. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, these are additional details that I don't know that is mentioned in the description. Oversized blocks. Is this bias tape? I don't know. Um, the placement of the pockets is a little bit iffy to me. They seem a little bit low and like they would draw attention, draw your eye to your high hip, which I don't necessarily want a lot of attention at my high hip. Obviously, you could move them. That's very easy to do. The sleeve also looks a little bit suspect. Certainly, it's short. Um, it needed to be lengthened. But I don't know what this little kicking out situation is either. Why is it going out like that? Something to do with hemming it, I think. Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, and then this. Is this top stitched on or... Is that part of the construction? I'm not sure. But I do like the snaps. Here it is in a more, well, just a print. The length is different here. 
so that's good. But now it seems crooked. Is it just me? Yeah, it's just really hard to pull off horizontal lines, you know what I mean? Especially this graphic. But yeah, it does seem like this is kind of falling to the side a little bit. Okay, here is the side view. Beautiful dart here. I do like all of these little details, but I would take this entire block and move it up to like start here so that all of this was happening around my natural waist. I think that would be a little more figure flattering for people who are pear-shaped. Um, here again is that exposed center back seam. The two-piece sleeve really is stunning. Stunning. I love a two-piece sleeve so much. Um, and then you've actually got a seam here, like kind of like a yoke. Right? Or is this the jacket inside out? No, that's not it. <laughs> It almost looks inside out, am I right? Where, where is that yoke thing coming from? Hmm. Here's the back of the black and gray one. It's the same thing there. I can't really see. Great shaping in the back. Really nice shaping. I need a little bit of steam here, but other than that. Um... Yeah, the shaping in the back looks really, really good. Here is the line drawing. And this is going to help you see a little bit better what I mean about this whole block just being a little bit low for me. Um, you know, all of this sits a couple of inches below the natural waist and just draws a lot of attention to, like, I'm a pear shape, so the widest part of me. If I were going to move all of this up where these little pocket things are sitting more at my natural waist, I think it would draw attention to the center of my body, which is the narrowest. Um, then again, that might also put this line right at my low hip and a horizontal line going around the widest part of you acts as like a visual ruler. So maybe, maybe this pattern just isn't for... Well, I don't want to say isn't for. Obviously, anybody, any shape, any size should be able to make this coat. I just don't know if I will feel my best in it. How's that? <laughs> um, okay, so no additional photos or anything on this is all we've got. So some cute ideas in there, though, for sure. For sure. Okay, so now let's go down and see if we got all of these. Millie, we saw. Willow got it. Vera, Evie, Iris. Okay, so Carolina is the only one we haven't seen. The Carolina dress is high on style and low on fussy sewing. Cute. Com combining two fabrics, a woven and a knit. Why do I feel like I've seen this? It can be a great stash buster. An elastic waistband at the back cinches you in while the front waist ties add attention. This pattern has been drafted for women 5'4 to 5'6. The model is 5'8 and wearing a size medium. Do I own this? I have 1000% seen this pattern somewhere. Maybe it was on Instagram. I don't know. The pattern is a combination of stretch and woven fabrics. The dress front and ties are knit. The back is woven. Go ahead and make yours. In an all knit combination, if you choose all woven, you may need to size up and or add a zipper. Choose fabrics of medium dress weight. When choosing your fabrics, do not combine natural fiber fabrics with synthetic fiber fabrics. That's an interesting point that I would not have considered. Choose all natural fibers or all synthetic. So, sink, so shrinkage rates are equal. For the knit front, choose medium weight rayon, viscose, or poly knits. For the back, Choose a shirting, weight, cotton, linen, rayon, viscose, polyester, and silk wool work. Whew, need inspo? Button and Pip did a lovely Carolina on Instagram. We will take a look at that. Uh, one and a quarter to one and a half yards for the front. The back, one and a third to one and a half yards. Elastic at the neck, five eighths wide. And then waist elastic. 
one and a half inches wide. Interesting. Okay, interfacing, matching thread. All right, so we've got a high neck knit front. Is that a grown on sleeve? I can't tell. Here it is from the side. Yeah, definitely a grown on sleeve. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to pair the front and the back like that. It's even got like a hem length that is like low, higher in the top. What am I saying? Higher in the front and lower in the back, but also has this little notched slit. Here's the back. So they use that same fabric with the embroidery on it. There's elastic in the neck line. That is so interesting. I literally have never seen that before. So that's how you get it on. That's what makes the woven side able to stretch to pull over your head. That's actually quite genius. Like a great little workaround for sure. Obviously, if you thought that you wouldn't like the neck, uh, the elastic in the neckline, you could just do a, a straight neckline and then do the keyhole back. But this is such a great way to make it way easier to sew. And then you've got this big thick elastic in this um, almost like a casing, not almost like an actual casing. And then the center back, there's no kick pleat or anything like that. It just falls straight from the hip. Interesting, all right, well, it's very interesting, the concept. I think that pairing your fabrics would be paramount. If somehow you could find, like, you know how Art Gallery and all the quilting fabric designers will make a collection of prints and then they'll do them in multiple different substrates? That could be kind of cool if you did, if you combined, you know, two of those, either of the same print, knit and woven front to back, so that you couldn't really tell they were different fabrics. They just wore differently. Or two uh, fabrics from the same collection, so they coordinate, because you know they use all the same colors. So they coordinate, and then you just put one in the front, make that, get that knit, and then get the fabric that you want in the back, the print you want in the back, to be the woven. Yeah, my brain is kind of hurting thinking of the possibilities, but I think you guys know what I'm saying. This is the size chart metric. Imperial is a bust of 33 to 52, up to 3X on this one. And then the hip is 36 to 56. And then this one, finished garment measurements, bust of 32 and a half, up to 50 and a half, and then a hip of 38 and a half up to 56 and a half. So yeah, the sizing seems a little bit, spur it doesn't seem to be the same pattern to pattern. I can't remember all the numbers that I've quoted this entire time, but it does seem like each of the body size charts are a little bit different. Maybe I'm remembering wrong, but all right, let's look at the button and pip version of this. So she looks like she did, hmm, her version, I love it. Black is fab for, so she doesn't say what fabric she used. So I'm guessing it's like a black jersey and then maybe like a rayon in the back or something. But you can see the neckline situation here. Hers is also just a lot more billowy, I think because, actually, I know, because she used like a rayon -y type of fabric in the back. I would do something more structured in the back, no matter what you're doing in the front. Cotton jersey in the front, cotton shirting in the back, something like that. Not that this looks bad, I just don't know about the all this happening. It also, too, does seem like it's pulling to the back a little bit, which I don't know what would help with that. Yeah, I don't know. This one could go either way, for sure. For sure. Um, okay, yep, that's it, Carolina. 
All right, so I'm not entirely sure where to find the London. I'm gonna do, let's just do a quick search and see if she pops up. No search results. So I guess they took the London away is all I can think of. Um, but she does have a somewhat up-to-date, oh, I was just about to say, her most recent post was just a couple weeks ago. But before that, she hadn't posted in almost a year. So, and then Carolina came out. And then here's another Evie dress. And then Hacking the Iris Top, Spring Trends. She announced her AO. And she's got some tips um, kind of tucked in here. So go through and look at the um, at the blog. I think there's only three pages. It's not a ton. I think you'd find some helpful information if you wanted to make some of her patterns. But, but yeah, that is it. Um, that is Fresh Press Patterns. Not many patterns. The requirement for a first impression Friday is five. So she has that and then some, but not much more. <laughs> um, but yeah, just let me know what you think of the designs in general. Um, obviously, I know the size chart is going to be disappointing to some of you. Um, but let me know what you think of the designs as well. <laughs> that is going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.